Hello, my fellow tech enthusiasts. Thanks for stopping by my channel. The other day I posted a short video on TikTok of a PlayStation starting up. I got a few people asking, how do you play those old games? Well, today, I'll answer that question and show you how you can play them for yourself. For those of you that don't already know, retro gaming is just playing games on old systems that aren't commonly sold anymore and are kind of hard to come by. It's a way we as a community can keep old games alive and preserve them for younger generations. This can be achieved by actually playing on the original system if you're lucky enough to still have them, playing on a modern device with the use of an emulator such as a PC with emulation software, or building a dedicated emulation device. I've used some variation of all of these, but today I want to talk about building your own retro gaming machine using a dedicated device with emulation software. For devices, you can use all sorts of things. You can use a Raspberry Pi Zero to make a mobile Game Boy-like gaming machine, a Retro Pi 4 to make a more dedicated machine for more intense games like PlayStation 1 3D games, or an old computer or laptop just sitting around. Uh, I like this option a lot because it reduces e-waste and puts life back into an old device. I've found that the RetroPie Zero method is great for gaming on the go. However, it has issues in playing anything beyond Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis games. So like if I try to play a PlayStation game on it or whatnot, it, it just doesn't work well. Um, however, using the Raspberry Pi, I've been able to play games like PlayStation 1 and stuff like that. But if I try to go anything beyond that, it sometimes have, it has issues depending on which Raspberry Pi 4 you have. Um, currently, I'm using a Lenovo M93 mini computer, which can play everything from Atari up to PlayStation 2. So that's kind of where I want it to be. Um, aside from various different hardware options, you also have several software options to choose from. The ones I have used primarily are more of emulation operating systems. They're basically just a bunch of emulators packaged up into one easy to use software. Some of these emulation OSs would include RetroPie, which I've gotten to work on more than just a Raspberry Pi. Uh, LaunchBox, which I have not personally used, but it is a favorite among the uh, community of retro gamers. And my personal favorite, RecallBox. For me, RecallBox is just easier to set up and use. I've had to spend very little time trying to get the games to work properly on it. I just basically load my ROMs into the proper folders and it just works. Some of the older arcade games I've had, like the MAME, systems uh I, I would have to find the correct emulator to run it but other than that it just it works i did start off using retro pie and i liked it a lot but i found myself spending a lot of time researching on how to get certain games to work and filling around with the extensive menus to adjust different options so with that being said let's get into what you will need to build your own retro gaming machine okay to be starting off you'll need the actual machine you're installing to which i am installing it to this mini computer this nook with an i5 intel core processor in it your game controller uh, a mouse and keyboard what you're installing it to so i'm showing this because most people won't have this cable it's a say to the usb cable but you can also install recall box to the usb and run it off of that downfall to that is the usb you're restricted to the size of the usb itself the cool thing is though you don't have to get rid of whatever operating system you have on there but i'm making this a dedicated retro gaming system so with that being said here's the hard drive actually from it and again the say to the usb cable um, other than these things that you see in front of me you'll need again keyboard and mouse and you also need a monitor or a tv along with the video cable appropriate for it all right first off if you're actually using a nook you're going to have to pull the hard drive out I'll show you quickly how to do that. We'll start by pulling these four bottom screws on its bottom out.
carefully pull everything out and the hard drive is usually on the bottom of nooks carefully pull that out and then we'll see the cage nuts this is only if you want to actually install recall box to the actual hard drive itself and not have it run off a of USB which I highly recommend that's how I'm, I'm setting this one up Carefully just wiggle it off of there. Grab that screw. There we go. Got the hard drive out. Okay. Let's put that off to the side. That's how you do that. Once you have all the hardware that you need, you're going to go to recallbox.com, download. We're doing a PC, so we're going to select PC. The OS, or it says, what is your PC model? So it's going to be this. And we're going to hit download. I've already downloaded because sometimes it takes a long time. Depending on your internet, sometimes it doesn't. Didn't want to bore you with that. So once it's downloaded, next we're going to go to Etcher. It's actually this. So when you're here, you're going to go to download Etcher. And you're going to pick your installation uh, you can do portable i do installer you'll click and download wait for it to download all right now comes the fun part so now that we've downloaded etcher we're going to go we're going to install it shouldn't take too long all right once Etcher is installed, we're going to select the file, recall box file we just downloaded. We're going to select the target. This is going to be the hard drive from the Nook I have. If you're using USB, this is where you would pick your USB. We're going to hit select, and we're going to flash. Uh, if you're using a hard drive, it says, oh, this is huge. Um, yeah, I'm sure. And we let it do its thing. Now we get to install and set up recall box. All right. So now we have it fully plugged into the monitor and everything installed on the hard drive and it's now loading for the first time. So we'll give it a minute. All right, once you have it loaded up, the first thing you're going to have to do is configure a controller. So on computer, you're going to hit enter, you're going to go down here, and then you're going to hit, you're going to use the arrow keys to navigate, then you're going to hit A. And you're going to hit A again, you're going to hit A again, and then with your controller connected, you're going to hold down a button, up, down, left, right, up left, up, left, A, B, X, Y, start, select, R1, R2, and then I always make the hotkey my PlayStation button. It is really important that, that you have that. Now that that's all set up, you're good to go to play some games. So. Recall Box comes with some standard built-in uh, freeware games. I think the coolest one that they have is this one. It's a Zelda version of Bloodborne. Highly recommend keeping this game.
What? Yep, that's it for the recall box setup. So after configuring your controls, the next step you want to do is add it to your Wi-Fi, or in my case, I've added to Ethernet. Take note of the IP address, because this is how you'll log into it to add your ROM files in your different games. I'll show you that here in a second. So once you're back on your computer, you'll want to open up File Explorer and type in the IP address, just like this, slash slash IP address, and you'll get a screen like this. So the username, the default username, and you'll want to change this as root, and then it's recall box root. Once in here, you'll go to share, and then you'll see your ROMs folder with all the different ones. So at this point, you can take your ROM files that you either ripped from your old games or obtained. Um, can't really tell you how to do that, but a quick Google search will help you figure that out. And then you'll copy and paste basically those files into the proper folder. Once in the folder, you'll go back into recall box. I'll show you that here in a second. You'll want to hit start. You'll want to go into the game section because it's just faster. You'll go to start and then update games list. It'll quickly restart and you should be able to go to whatever games you loaded and you should see them there. If you don't, then your game might be in the wrong format or if it's in, still in a zip file, you might need to unzip it. Other than that, that's basically recall box. And that is how you set up your retro gaming machine. Um, I showed you what I feel is the best method of directly installing recall box onto a hard drive, onto an actual computer. Uh, I've used Raspberry Pis, like I said in the past. Um, if you want to go again above PlayStation 1, you want to get that PlayStation 2, GameCube, Wii kind of thing, you're going to have to get a decent machine. Not necessarily a gaming PC, but something a little bit more powerful than what a uh, Raspberry Pi can offer. A couple of gotchas that come with Recall Box or just any emulator is MAME games specifically. Sometimes they won't work. Uh, don't get disheartened. It's not that it won't work. It's just you have the wrong default emulator set for it. So you'll have to go into the actual settings, change that usually to an older one. Uh, and it will work. I ran, I've had to go through all of my main games one by one and make sure that they're all working, which is a lot of fun. But yeah, I, that's, there it is. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments and uh, please share and subscribe. Thanks.